Welcome back Retro Gang. September's issue of the official PlayStation magazine dropped yesterday and brought a ton of information on weapons customization as well as the variations of vehicles and their styles in Cyberpunk 2077. In the article, CDPR's art team really went into detail into their inspiration as well as the process of creating believable characters, weapons, and vehicles within the game. While I won't go too much into the details of the interview, I'll summarize some of what they said as I start this new series taking a closer look at any new screenshots or small bits of information on Cyberpunk 2077. If you're new here, you can call me Retro. I make analysis and lore videos two to three times a week on any and everything Cyberpunk 2077. So if you like this type of content, consider subscribing for more. And don't forget to leave a like for the Y tag. All right, you ready? Strap in, boys. Let's ride. Getting right into it, gang. Concept art coordinator Ben Andrews says the team's inspiration when it came to the weapons was the already fanatic nature of the American gun culture. They then morphed and fantasized it into the dystopian corporate controlled future of 2077. Everyone, even children carry guns in Night City. Cheap weapons, often called one-shot polymers, like the budget arms Slotomatic. It can be bought from vending machines or 24-7 stores all around the city. They are usually very inaccurate, poorly made, and cannot be reloaded. The initial concept was almost entirely satirical, Andrew says. We use it to defend your home, then throw it away and buy a new one. While there's many weapons like this in the game, we also have weapons like the Arasaka Masumune that was seen in the Tools of Destruction trailer a few weeks ago. You can check out the analysis of that in entire trailer here on the channel. One of the variants has a more tactical approach, fitted with a scope and suppressor, while the other looks more close quarters combat oriented, with iron sights, no suppressor, and alternate ammunition. The Arasaka pistol here, also seen in the weapons trailer, is shown with a distinctively red magazine, most likely signifying more deadly or damaging ammunition. I find it really cool that our custom attachments will play that big a role on individual playstyles and how we use our weapons in the game. Now of course, these high-tech weapons and attachments will require the skill and cyberware to use them. Andrew says that there are even smart weapons that will link up with your cyber optics to increase the accuracy and your proficiency with that weapon. Once you've locked onto your target, every bullet is going to go towards them. There's also Borg weapons, a heavy weapons class that can only be operated by players with the Gorilla Arms augmentation. There's weapons in the game that will throw you to the ground if you're underleveled and not equipped for the job. Not only does this style of weapon design support the cyberpunk themes, but also the main RPG element in the game. Touching on cyberware, Andrew says the Mantis Blades is where it all began. Since the start, they've been committed to making a believable open world AAA RPG. A big part of that is looking at the source material, as well as the current real world applications, then bringing it all to life in a credible way within the game. Much like today's obsession with clothing brands like Nike, Ralph Lauren, and Calvin Klein, technology and cybernetics have become a status symbol in Night City. The upper echelon can afford internal, real skin covered enhancements and weapons from Arasaka and Militech, while the middle and lower classes of the population use lower tier weapons and crudely made cybernetics by Budget Arms or Rastavik. Moving on, vehicle concepts in the game was said to be inspired heavily by 80s and 90s automobiles like the Lamborghini Miura and Countach, as well as the De Tomaso Pantera. There's about 29 base models of cars split into groups that define their use or who would be driving them, with many different variants within each group. There are dilapidated vehicles driven by members of the entropism class of society, retrofitted with aftermarket tech like solar panels to keep them going. Middle class vehicles that can be found in many colors and styles, representing the kitsch, style over substance members of society, while neo-militarists will drive very high-tech armored versions of popular civilian vehicles. The neo-kitsch, uber-rich members of Night City are in a class of their own. Vehicles like the Rayfield Arendite won't feature much aftermarket modifications because of their cost and status, but will be found in different colors and sportier variants. Lastly, vehicles modded by nomads are often sturdier than normal street cars because of their heavier use and unconducive road conditions. Nomad cars are often modded in ways that completely change the experience for the driver. Much like in the Rayfield, many Nomad cars are fitted with infrared crystal dome technology that forgoes the need for windows. You view the outside through cameras that feed to LCD screens within the car. They realistically convey the world around you whilst keeping you safe from bullets or debris as you rip through the arid badlands. Thank you for making it to the end. This is a brand new channel so feedback on any and everything, bad or good, is greatly appreciated. If there's anything that you notice, tell me what I'm doing right or wrong down in the comments. If you enjoy this new style of video, remember to leave a like for the Y tag and consider subscribing for more Cyberpunk 2077 content.